Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. It's good to be here again in the house of the Lord to worship Him and thank Him for His love and for His mercy. A few announcements before we begin our service uh, today. Well, we celebrate the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, we follow the order of service that has been printed for this occasion. Uh, a few announcements, and one of the things I'd like to mention that we had Bible study on Thursday, uh, but this week, but this passing. Uh, and there were six members, plus me, seven. So that was great. The next one will be September 29th at 10 a.m. And again, there will be coffee and tea and other things to eat. But I had a, a good time on Thursday. <laughs> so I a few pounds, I guess. That day. It's your fault, okay? If you see me here, okay, it's your fault. No, all those were delicious. I want those wonderful. Um, for this week, we have, uh, uh, we're going to be busy this week. We have Tuesday um, uh, attending uh, the circuit pastors meeting at Peace in Tilsonburg. We have trustees meeting at 6.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. council meet. So that's on Tuesday. On Wednesday it's, uh, at Faith, we have latest Bible study. On Thursday at 10 a.m., office hours here at Grace, and if you like to speak with me or call me, you are welcome to do that. And at 7 p.m., we have at Faith for the, the first meeting for the first year confirmants uh, and parents. So that will be at Faith. At Grace, we will have it here next Thursday, and hopefully we will have some children here as well to participate in confirmation, first year confirmation. Uh, anyway, so you could read by yourself all these activities. Saturday we have confirmation class at, at 8, at 10 a.m., and at 3 p.m. Spanish devotion to Bible study. So those are the activities that we're going to have, faith in grace. And, well, again, so thanks for those who are serving today in the house of the Lord. God bless you. And at the end of the service, after the closing of the hymn, so my wife and I will return to Faith in London, and Ken is going to speak a little bit, uh, one project that we have uh, at, at Faith in Grace. And he's going to speak to you. I won't say anything more about that. It's about a program, program that is called Vitality Lutheran Revitalization Program. So, and it's going to speak about that, that we're going to be doing that at Faith and at Grace. And this is, you could find it in page 5 in the bulletin, that information, but he's going to speak about that after the closing hymn. So I will ask you to just to sit for a couple minutes. It's not going to take too much just for you to know what we are going to be doing. And my wife and I will return to London. Okay, so we are ready to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, welcome to all of you, to those who watch us online, and let us prepare ourselves, our heart, to, to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and let us share to one another the peace of Christ. begin our service with our singing our opening hymn, Lord of Glory, you have bought us.
begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. Let not steadfast love and faith faithfulness forsake you. Buy them around your neck, write them on the tablets of your heart, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Dear friends in Christ, let us humble ourselves before God, confess our sins to Him, and ask His gracious forgiveness for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sins to God. We now confess God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and before one another that we are sinful human beings by nature and by deeds. We have not always put God first. We have used His holy name in ways that do not honor Him. We have not always been devoted to the Lord and have not fully cherished the sacred writings of our faith. We have failed in ways of keeping our thoughts, words, and deeds pure and honorable. At times we have taken what is not ours and have spoken that which is not helpful or true. We have broken the law of God by acknowledging that which is not rightfully ours, and have not put the best instruction on all things, and spoken the best of all people. We pray, O God, have mercy on us, to forgive us all our sins, and to bring us to the last life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remissions of all our sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the Android. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your just decrees. You have appointed your testimonies in righteousness and in all faithfulness. My zeal consumes me, because my foes forget your words. Your promise is well tried, and your servant loves it. Your righteousness is righteous forever, and your law is true. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. For you, Lord, we bow.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your church in your perpetual mercy, and because without you we cannot but fall, preserve us from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us give us Good morning. The Old Testament reading this morning is from Amos 8, verses 4 to 7. It's an exhortation and a decree from the Old Testament for us all to live justly. Hear this, you who trample on the needy and bring the poor of the land to an end, saying, When will the new moon be over? and that we may sell, sell grain, and the Sabbath, that we may offer wheat for sale, that we may, may make the ephah small, and the shekel great, and deal deceit with false balances, that we may buy the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals, and sell the chaff of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely, I will never forget any of their deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. And our epistle lesson this morning is from 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 to 15. The Lord wants all people to be saved. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings, and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good. It is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this, I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise also, that women should adorn themselves in respectful apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness, with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing, if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus calls his disciples to make serving him to priority. And this is going to be the text for our meditation this morning. Please rise to hear the Gospel. Jesus also said to the disciples, there was a rich man who has a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be manager. 
And the manager said to himself, what shall I do since my master is taking the management away from me? I am not strong enough to dig and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am removed <coughs> from management, people may re receive me into their houses. So, summoning his master's debtors, one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. The master commanded that the son is manager for his shrewdness, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourself by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. The Pharisees who were lovers of money heard all these things and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, You are those who just justify yourself before men, but God knows your hearts, for what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We continue speaking the nice and Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being in one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and it was a man, and it was crucified also for us in the Mount of God. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to his scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge all the living and the dead, for his kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, and I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I will put the resurrection of the dead. In the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with singing our sermon. <laughs>
grace, uh, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear believers, today's gospel, today's gospel lesson is not about how you should be careful in your management of what God has given you so you do not get in trouble with him. Because it is too late for that. We have been in trouble with God since the beginning, since before we were born. And our problem is not simply mismanagement or something like that. Our problem is sin. Our problem is not simply that we do not listen to God. Our problem is that we rebel against God. Our sinful nature does not like God. We are enemies of God. And there is no way we can fix that. There is no way we can remove our sins on, on our own. No way we can reorder our thinking. <clears throat> There's no way we can change our idolatry into true worship of the only true God. No, my dear friends in Christ, this parable is not about becoming moral either. So God will like us and be satisfied with us. Friends, there is something much deeper here in this parable. But yes, I have to be honest, we find something about stewardship here. There. What did the steward do? He reduced the debts of his master's debtors. For this he is called truth or prudent. Because he was highlighting his master's mercy. I think that you remember that <clears throat> the sermon of last Sunday. Last Sunday, I mentioned to you in the sermon, the chapter 15 from the, the Gospel of Luke. It speaks about three parables which tell us about the love of God, the mercy and compassion of God for us, for each of us. The lost, the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost sons are sought out and found. Sought out and found. Those are pretty easy parables, for we are the sheep, the coins, and the sons. But today, in this parable that we might find it a little bit difficult, we see another attribute of God, an attribute that complements His love. Today we see that love in action in the mercy of God. In chapter 15 from the Gospel of Luke, the Pharisees were the primary audience. So Jesus was speaking there. They were there and Jesus speaking to them, Pharisees. They needed to know that God's love extends way beyond those who feel themselves entitled to that love, that they deserve that love. And that's what the Pharisees thought. Pharisees were always very sure of themselves. <laughs> and we still have those kinds of people in our time. They are always very aware of all they have done for God. <clears throat> they fully expect to be loved and of course rewarded in turn. And yet, when they look out from their crowd at others, they see masses of people who are not worthy of even the slightest bit of God's love. Or at least, so they think. Now we go to chapter 16 from the same gospel. Look. In chapter 16, Jesus' disciples are the main audience. 
disciples, followers of Jesus, Jesus is speaking to them, believers, us, believers. They know themselves to be loved. After all, Jesus chose them individually. They are very much like you. Chosen by God, one by one. And like you, they wanted to truly serve God. They wanted to do that. They desired to serve the Lord. So what do disciples need to learn? Them and us. Mercy. The mercy of God. The love of God. The mercy they have received so lavishly through God's love is also the mercy that they are so lavishly to extend to the rest of the world. So they have to bring that love of God to others, to those who are around us. True disciples are always learning what it means to be merciful. The steward in this parable is commended by his master because he has shown mercy on the debtors. The debts were significant. 1,000 bushels of wheat, an amount of oil valued at 300 days wages. To reduce those debts was an act of great mercy. And keep in mind that much of the debt would have come from accumulated interest. Debts never remain as they are. They always grow. Anyone who has fallen behind in loan payment knows that. Interest can quickly make a small debt into a very large one. Now, let us put Jesus into this parable. Jesus into this parable. Who is the one who constantly showed mercy to the troubled, the destitute? Jesus Christ. It's Jesus. And for those who thought it their business to keep track of debts, that was annoying. Actually, it was worse than annoying. The Pharisees found Jesus to be extremely unpleasant. That's the way Jesus is. He always annoys Pharisees, even the Pharisees of today. Jesus came into the synagogue at Nazareth and announced that the promise of a Messiah proclaimed by the prophet Isaiah was being fulfilled in him. That was not well received by the Pharisees. That was scandalous to them. How dare Jesus says that? Then Jesus unfavorably compared Israel to Naaman the Syrian leper. For that he was almost killed. More fuel on the fire. As time goes on, Jesus is accused of having a demon and being a glutton and drunkard. Then there is that business about Jesus' disciples' failure to fast and pray in accord with pharisaical rules. The disciples even harvest grain on the Sabbath to eat. And on the Sabbath, Jesus heals. Heals the sick, the lepers, and so on. He goes so far as to eat with tax collectors and sinners. Luke chapter 15, last Sunday. Friends, one thing after another enraged the Pharisees. That's how the Pharisees saw Jesus. And now Jesus portrayed himself as an unrighteous steward. Going around, reducing the bills of those who owe something to his master. <laughs> But the Pharisees, who have been listening in all the time, figured that one out, they must have been sitting. And yet, the point remains. 
Disciples are to show mercy, love, care toward others. The stewards did, and those acts of mercy would cost him. Again, friends, we are not talking about oil and wheat here. No, we are talking about even greater and more profound deaths. We are speaking of sins. Deaths to our God that we are helpless to change. Deaths that from our st standpoint can only grow. But if some consider sin so trivial as to be unimportant, Many others consider the willingness of God to forgive as almost unholy, outrageous, unrighteous. In their minds, it is too easy. They hear the pastor proclaim, I forgive you all your sins. And they do not like it. Like Pharisees, they consider it too generous, too easy. So what's the solution in their eyes? <coughs> Do good works. Add deeds or good works to make forgiveness more real, more justifiable. And consequently, the church in this world is divided up all over the place because we are often too rebellious to just listen to God's word about forgiveness we have to squeeze ourselves in our works and our deeds and our doing it into it somehow. All of that goes back to the lie of Satan, the lie of Satan that makes question what the gracious Lord has done for us in Jesus Christ. For with that lie, we think that somehow we can make ourselves worthy of God's love, God's mercy, making us more deserving or forgiveness because we have actually done something for God. We have done some of the atoning for ourselves. You know, in our parable, it is interesting that the master commends his stewards because in reducing the debt, the steward has shown mercy. And since there is absolutely no indication that the master ever insisted that the original amounts be reinstated, that clearly suggests that he was satisfied. He was happy. He was satisfied with what the steward had done. In other words, the master also is merciful to the debtors. Remember the words that the Heavenly Father spoke from, from heaven at Jesus' baptism. <clears throat> this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Well pleased indicate that the Father in heaven is well pleased with His Son because the Son has shown mercy on sinners. And we are not talking about healings or even raising people from the dead. Now we are talking about the mercy of Jesus that canceled debts of sin by taking those sins unto himself all the way to the cross as if they were his own. Jesus does not simply tell us to mark down our debt to God to a more reasonable figure, to discount our debt, our sin to an amount that we can maybe handle. No. Jesus Christ takes the whole thing, the whole debt, all of our sin, all of it from us, and with his blood erase it. That's mercy. That's love. That is the love of God in action. A love a mercy that you will never fully and completely comprehend in this life. You have not been any more deserving of mercy than were the death doors in our, in our text. But you have received it just the same. Your words of repentance have always been 
met with God's word of absolution. Even before you knew there was anything to be repented of, you were forgiven. Even before you spoke it, you were forgiven. And now, what do we do now that we are forgiven? Now we forgive in like manner. We bring that forgiveness to those who are around us, who hurt us, who gave us trouble. That's what disciples do. They take what has been so lavishly given to them and they give it to others. Our unrighteousness has been covered by the sacrifice of Jesus so that we can cover that is, forgive the unrighteousness of others. And where does all this end? Not in this life, that's for certain. Every day we are in desperate need of God's forgiveness. And every day we receive it. In like manner, there are many around us who constantly need to be forgiven by us. The master held no grudge against his steward in that he forgave debts. In like manner, we can hold no grudges. This is not prudence or truthness on our part. It's simply a matter of faithfulness. The same God who loved you so that he found you when you were totally unaware that you needed finding, that same God has showered His mercy on you and on me, loves all those around you too. Again, friends, this parable is not about business savvy or commodity prices or interest accumulation. No, it is about that though, the great debt of sin that you and I have. The mountain of sin that is so far above us to even comprehend, let alone pay. Now this parable, which most people find difficult, is about God's love for sinners. God's loving action for sinners. For you and for me, God showed mercy and forgiven the huge debt of sin for sinners like you and me. There it is. You have been forgiven. Never doubt about that. Your faith in Jesus reassures that. You have been redeemed. The steward of the master, that would be Jesus our Lord and Savior, has done more than you can ever imagine. He has not just reduced your debt. He has, he has claimed that debt of his own. It is gone away. As far as the east is from the west, so have your sin been taken away from you. And for that, we thank the Lord. Amen. At this moment, we continue collecting the offering and we send him 890.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing that you give us without any merit from our part. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for our sins. We return to you a portion of what you have given us in order to use it in your kingdom. Is right. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. Father, Father in heaven, look with mercy on us. Your needy children on earth and grant us grace that you your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shone forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all the false doctrine and evil living whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands, we commend the following people who are going through difficult times in body and mind. Remember Dorothy, Cassie, Susan, Jean, Anne and Mike, Rainer and Marianne, Ridva, Marcos and Risto, Lisette and her family, Barbara, Geraldine, March, Lunda, Kira and unborn babies. As well, we pray for those who are in our hearts and minds. We pray for all of them at all times. Time will be done, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, you have established the families in this world. We ask your protection and guidance to the families who are part of grace. We remember Andy, Dan, and Lauren, Albert, and Barbara, that they seek always the comfort of your word and the assurance of your presence in their life. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, your blessings are eternal. Bless those members who are celebrating their birthdays this week. We remember Sheldon and Becky. O oh Lord, keep them in faith over you and give them plenty of years to celebrate their birthdays. Lord, your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for the people in Ukraine, Russia, and other nations of the world who are facing war and social unrest. We pray for all those suffering or afraid, that you will be close to them and protect them. We pray for world leaders, for compassion, strength and wisdom to guide their choices. We pray for the world that in this moment of crisis we may reach out in solidarity to those who are in need. May we walk in your ways so that peace and justice become a reality for those nations who are in conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten us or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, your mercy, hear our prayer. And lastly, O oh, oh Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, your mercy, 
hear our prayer. prayer. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Lord our God. Holy are you, and great is the majesty of your glory. You did so love the world. You sent your only Son to be our Redeemer. By his sacrificial life, he has brought us salvation and has shown us the path to life eternal. Pour upon us now the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we may receive the body and blood of our Lord with true devotion. Grant us a foretaste of the feast to come, Heavenly Father, that we may with increased faith joyfully await a blessed eternity in your glorious presence. send your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to be our Redeemer, saving us from the power of sin, death, and the devil. <clears throat> Invited by your grace and supported by your love, we come to your table with trans thanksgiving and praise. Grant that we, with true faith and trust in your words of promise, receive the bread and wine that is the very body and blood of Christ as a guarantee of the salvation that he pushes for us through his innocent suffering and death on the cross. Receive our prayers and praises, and grant us your abiding peace. You alone, O Father, be your glory, honor, and praise, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
can preserve body and soul, life everlasting. We bargain these great joy. Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and with great joy. Amen. Amen. We continue singing the non Dimitris. <coughs>
we have concluded our service this morning, so we're going, uh, my wife and I come back to London, unless she wants to stay here. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll come back for you in the evening. So. <laughs> Choose any house, okay? okay. <laughs> and I will pick you up there. <laughs> okay, God bless you. Take care. Go out and serve the Lord. And Ken is going to say a few words. God bless you. Take care. Thank you, everyone, for staying a little bit. And uh, greetings from the council or from the committee of elders. Thank you, Pastor. Um, please read in the uh, today's bulletin about this survey and what's required. Uh, I know the pa uh, pastor has mentioned it, but uh, this will be an ongoing thing for the next over the next month or so. so. Uh, hopefully, don't panic just because it's a survey and it's on the computer. We will uh, certainly walk you through it if you have any issues. I'm just going to read to you a uh, message from the elders about this. Many of us, if not all of us here today, have been concerned about the decline in the Christian church in Canada over the past number of years. And for us in particular, uh, we worry about the future of our, future of our grace uh, faith congregation. Your board of elders would like to do something about that. With your full support and with God's help, we can. Through communication with the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, we have been offered an opportunity to participate in their revitality Lutheran revitalization, revitalization program. And you can read more about that, I, I say, in, in your bulletin today. There's, there's a fair bit of uh, detail with that. So I'm not going to probably answer any questions today, but there'll be more of this as it uh, comes out. The desired outcomes of the involvement in the program for Faith Grace will be more focused the sense of purpose and direction going forward, which we can build upon together. In a supportive and constructive way, we will want to faithfully carry out our part in God's mission in the unique context of our faith grace uh, congregation. But the first step of the program is to complete a survey, and that activity is described more fully in the bulletin today, as I mentioned. The key to that successful survey will be, will be uh, for your participation. So that part I would stress. As this rolls out, uh, and if you're not fully proficient with the computer, I mean, we're here to help too. There will be paper copies. The trouble with that is paper will have to be eventually transposed onto the computer. So um, we can work it out. Don't, and don't be afraid of it. So between now and the start of the survey, uh, October 16th, which the fairways off, you will be hearing more from the pastor and the elders and uh, others too. And if you have any questions or concerns along the way, please reach out to the pastor or us elders here. Um, I can tell you that I have looked at the survey and it, it's fairly extensive it's, mm -hmm. and it does ask questions that uh, should be answered honestly and openly, but you don't have to worry about writing things down. It's a survey to measure uh, quantitatively from either strongly agree or strongly disagree. So that's the scale of the, uh, the survey. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of a thing where you put a little tip. It's not that you, but they do cover many, many aspects. So it might take you 20 minutes to do the survey, but again, don't be afraid of it. It's, it's important and it goes beyond our church. It'll, it'll feed into the uh, the Lutheran Canada uh, system. So we hope to get some good answers and it'll direct us to, uh, it'll be a measure, uh, basically a measure of our church's strengths and weaknesses. And those strengths and weaknesses will be improved upon and it'll lead us in whatever direction our answers provide. So uh, there'll be more coming over the next month. So if you have basic questions, I can probably answer some basic stuff if you have any issues, but I think more of it will be coming up in the future. Thank you.